While we may tend to think of beetles as diminutive, pretty standard looking invertebrates, today we're searching for a species that just might change your perception of how charismatic beetles truly can be if you take a closer look. My name is Ben Zeno, and my mission is to inspire you to learn about and conserve the amazing wildlife that's just waiting to be discovered all around us. And beetles definitely qualify as amazing wildlife. Well, this is not the beetle we're looking for, but this is still a really awesome invertebrate. You gonna click? <laughs> Look at that. These are so cool. Now, eye spot click beetles are some of the most famous beetles here in North Carolina because they have this extremely distinctive appearance. They have pretty elongated bodies, very dorsally compressed, but the eye spot click beetle is awesome because it has these kind of like white splatter paint speckling here on the abdomen. And then the thorax of this beetle is remarkable because it actually has these two eye spots. It's where it gets its common name from. Now, these eye spots are made to confuse predators into thinking that this is a much bigger organism than it actually is and potentially redirect attacks meant for the actual head capsule, which is about an inch in front of those eye spots to the eye spot area itself, which is reinforced with chitin. So as adults, they'll feed on tree saps and also rotten wood and fruits and things like that. And the larval stage of the click beetle is also pretty interesting. It's a very unique looking grub called a wireworm, which is actually predatory. So they'll eat other grubs and invertebrates. For several years, they'll actually dwell in the soil and in that rotten log until they have enough energy to metamorphose into this adult stage. I think these are such beautiful beetles, but this is actually not the species we're targeting today. Today, we are searching for a much larger beetle. So we'll put this awesome eye spot beetle right back on its log and we'll keep searching for our stag beetle. Oh boy, <laughs> we got a grub. Oh man, that thing's huge. This right here is actually the grub of what I believe to be a giant stag beetle. It's definitely a stag beetle grub, and I can tell because here at the rear end, there's actually a Y-shaped lobe. And also this head capsule has some pretty impressively developed mouth parts, and it already has this kind of reddish tint to it, which is very similar to the coloration the stag beetles will actually have as adults. It has been feeding probably for the last six to 18 months. And based on its size, I would say it might be just about done feeding and ready to transform into an adult stage beetle. So the larval stage of our stag beetles is actually longer than the adult stage. They'll feed within and underneath these logs on decomposing wood and plant and animal matter. And the interesting thing is these grubs actually can't digest the wood. Wood is made from a couple really tough compounds like lignin and cellulose, which are impossible for most animals to digest without the help of special bacteria and fungi, which actually lives in the gastrointestinal tract of this grub. So it's actually those microbes that are breaking down these really tough plate materials and turning them into simple sugars that this grub can use for energy. This is still a really important life stage for these beetles because it's as grubs that they're developing most of the energy reserves that they use as adults. But this is a really good sign. It means there are stag beetles in this forest and it means we're looking in the right type of wood to try and find them. That's pretty sweet, but let's see if we can get an adult stag beetle now. So basically the way we search for these beetles, we're finding logs like this and we're searching the crevices and under these big pieces of bark. Anyways, we've got lots of logs to check. Let's see if we can find an adult. Oh my gosh. Oh, there's one. Yes, finally. Not the species I was looking for. Holy cow. Oh my gosh, there's two. There's a second one. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, this is not the stag beetle I was looking for, but this is still a stag beetle and it is still one of the largest stags in North Carolina. These are reddish brown stag beetles, aptly named for their reddish brown coloration. Usually they're, oh, oh. hey buddy, <laughs> look at you go. And how awesome that I found two different genders of beetle under the same log. Now, stag beetles are named because the males have these really enlarged mandibles compared to the females. And if you look at these beetles with their streamlined bodies and these really huge mandibles, it might look like these beetles are going to be carnivorous, like these really powerful, active predators. But actually, that's not the case. The enlarged mandibles on this male are actually used for male-to-male -male combat. So as adults, these beetles actually feed on tree sap. And the males will defend 
the best sap sites from other males so that they will attract females which they can then reproduce with. And a stag beetle's main defense from predators is going to be this really tough chitinous exoskeleton to keep them safe, but they will also use their mandibles as an anti-predatory tool in a pinch. <laughs> Get it, a pinch. Now the lifespan of an adult stag beetle is only going to be about six months or so at the most. So the adults are much shorter lived than the grubs are. And their primary purpose is not feeding, even though they do eat that tree sap, their primary purpose is reproduction. So this is the stage at which these beetles are actually capable of flight. You can't see the flight wings right now because they're very thin and membranous. And so they're actually covered by the elytra. Now this is a nocturnally flying species, so they're often attracted to artificial lights at night, and that is when you're most likely to find them, unless you seek them out under logs or under bark during the day. So once the male and the female reproduce, the female will seek out a rotten log just like this one. She'll deposit her eggs in the soil beneath the log, and those eggs will hatch and begin the grub phase of the life cycle all over again. Now, because these beetles rely on these down woody debris for survival, when forested areas are cleared of snags or existing down woody debris, it can be pretty terrible for this species. So let's test out the male Males biting power right now because lots of people are curious including myself how hard they can actually pinch down with these mandibles well he's actually not pinching at all so apparently they don't bite so if you are lucky enough to see these beetles there's no reason to fear them or like squish them or anything like that you can just let them go about their business and they will continue fulfilling their important ecological role as decomposers and as food for a variety of different predators. What a cool opportunity to really get a look at the sexual dimorphism between these beetles. We'll get them right back in the rotten log because it's very possible that this female is actually about to lay eggs under there. That is so cool. Thanks y'all. Here's your sneak peek at the species that will be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. I'll see you next time, but until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.